illegal. I like having every stage too, honestly. Um, not gonna, not gonna front a little bit, but hey, this is exactly what we expected. It will be Super Striker Sonic going up against Mr. E's Lucina. Ooh, I like that reskin too. And we're gonna be going into it. Battlefield is the pick. Game one. I start these things off, and we already see the game plan for both these players. Yep, platform camping from Lucina and um, Sonic going to ledge, trying to wait for whip punches. I thought they were button checking. I wouldn't blame you. <laughs> <laughs> I, they were just like, no, nah, no, nah, you come here. No, nah, no, nah, you come here. Yeah. Nah, you oh, come yeah. here. So I think Mr. E has a, a pretty firm gripping on this matchup. They're not overextending. They're not whipping anything, which is what Sonic really does. And they're punishing all of the lazy options that we see a lot of Sonic go for, like, you know, just run up spin dashes and also, um, you know, landing nares. But they're parrying them. So they're able to get a lot of follow-up punishes that Lucina normally can't get too much. Ooh, and I love the coverage of that up on the platform for sure, taking advantage of that. Oh, that's dead. No, oh, no, no, another dude. Good drift in. And even wonderful spacing on the part of Sonic. You know, we know how long that forward smash is for sure. And a beautiful wake up in the air. Down air on the part. Out of disadvantage from Mr. E. I don't even know what to say right there. Right dead layer because these guys are swinging at each other. Counter almost killing Sonic off the side. Holy uh, moly. I I think this would be one of the first enormous wins on a big stage for Super Striker, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, and already they're starting to get uh, the, the money tag. They're starting to manifest it a little bit in their head, but not to be outdone, Mr. E with that pivot boost F tilt to take that stock. Good stuff right there. Good stuff right there. That pivot boost stuff is so important, especially with getting Lucina's forward tilt out exactly where you want them. You don't want to be committing too much with that forward smash. So it's kind of a tech that you pretty much have to learn if you're going to play a character like Lucina, if you really want to play this character at the top level play that they are so capable of doing. Really interesting up air placement, like utilizing it as a lingering hitbox for the second time that I've seen Super Striker do throughout this set, uh, throughout this game, I should say, just yeah. to cover where Mr. E was going to go. Well, if you're on a stage like Battlefield with this much verticality, I don't really think uh, uh, using up air is ever a really bad idea. No, not at all. Not at all. It's definitely like a good lingering hitbox or just catch landings whenever you're around. You know, especially on a stage like Battlefield, where sort of sharking and catching landings can be just so, so important. It's a very vertically inclined stage, like you said, Laird. So definitely a good option for a Sonic player to use regardless. Yeah, I will say Mr. E's doing an amazing job holding center right now. Oh yeah, and the ledge trap as well. Going to be catching that shield with a grab. Nair one, not going to get a follow-up, and they are going to catch the air to the back air. Now Mr. E's starting to cook. And when he's in the kitchen, man, you better be ready to serve yourself a five-star dinner. <laughs> for sure, better just hope that five-star dinner is chili dog. It's the only one that this guy's going to be eating for sure. <laughs> up in the air we go with the up tilt, keeping him back in his advantage. Yep. That is one of the things that Mr. E is known for, my friend. Big sword hitbox, good mobility. I get you in air, I wait for you air dodge, I hit you in face. Oh man, and these frame traps too for Mr. E are so devastating. Catching these air dodges in the air every direction, and no matter what, even if they whip one, they always have the second move figured out. Uh, they honestly, I think, use initial aerials as checkmate, and then try to see what option comes out next. Mr. E's been doing that really well, and no matter what, it doesn't look like they're ever in the losing situation. Oh my god, and the down air coverage from Mr. E. Both these players, no matter what position they're in, they know how to use like these weird hitboxes in such precise and just coverage ways to just get them to go where they need to go. Mr. E with these down airs, and Super Striker with the opposite, with these up airs for sure. Swinging for the fences again is Super Striker right there with a the whip grab. Gonna eat a back air for it. Down tilt, knocked off right here. Ooh, no rising down air to try to get the spike this time around. Mr. E not playing with his food a little bit. He's just trying to close out the stock here as best he can. Yeah, but then again, if you're on that last stock, you know Sonic has very, very strong options as, as it comes to getting you off stage. And man, you do not want to get gifted out by that, by that spring or you don't want to be side beat into forward air. But anything could happen as long as Super Shark can get back on stage and they're gonna roll to center. They're trying to get a whip punch, but that's the reverse of downer actually killing because I think Super Shark was still holding forward because of the spin dash. So bad guy, and that's gonna be taking that first game for Mr. E. I gotta say, I love what Mr. E did at the end of that game right there before he closed out the stock. He got a grab on um, Super Striker at the, uh, at the end of the stage. He knows that up throw is not going to kill, especially on Battlefield. And he elects to just pummel for damage, you know, not wanting to forward throw to get Sonic in a higher position based on the percentage he's at. Because he knows that Sonic probably could have just spin dashed on the platform to make his way out. 
I'm thinking that's what his logic is, because I'm not sure if he could have up-tilted or up-smashed him for that, but any way that he could just, like, play neutral with Sonic as little as possible in that scenario, or perhaps he just wanted the damage or thought that the angle he would go at off of the grab release off the pummel would be way safer. Some, uh, little mini brawl stuff coming out right there this time around. Minus the chain grab for sure, but good stuff to them. Gonna win game at number one by Mr. E, and we're going to Town & City for game two. Yeah, uh, which left was left unbanned. I can definitely see why this is unbanned by Mr. E, because Lucina does need a little bit help killing, and Soul Horizon Blessings are a good way to do that, but Sonic also struggles to kill sometimes, and, well, this is gonna do the exact same thing for them, but it is a longer stage, which is a lot harder for Mr. E to control more of, which means Super Striker can camp to their heart's content, and also be able to get that spin dash in line for good whip punches, just like that one. Ooh. Oh, I don't know if that was snapback at the end of that combo right there for that up tilt to the person the way it did. He definitely meant to do that in the other direction for sure, but still an absolutely crazy, crazy low up air first hit to just get that combo going as well. I gotta say, Super Striker's up air usage has been immaculate throughout this set so far. Yeah, we do talk about how Mr. Even Sheffin, but Super Striker has been raised in the Wi Fi era. So they know a thing or two about cheesing out games, and if you need, if you play Sonic, you gotta need to do that sort of thing. But then again, show has been super nice as well uh, as a whole. And frankly, yeah, like you were talking about the up air usage, uh, the big thing to keep them in the set, honestly. It has for sure, you know. I see another one going for the fences right there again. I think a forward air probably would have been a little better there, but just utilizing that move again and again, trying to just get it to work, and most of the time he does. Mr. E holding down the stage this time around, though. Neither of these characters should have too hard of a time killing off the side, especially like Yo. that. I was just gonna say with those back airs, that is the Mr. E special right there. It's just catching your air dodges, catching your recovery out of disadvantage, whether you're from the air or off the level. Lucina swings for the fences, especially when that fence is airborne. Right. I, I do love the patience to get that back air as well, too, because uh, he recognized that Super Striker wasn't going to be going for that get-up attack on the platform to try to catch Mr. E out, but Mr. E out was just like, you know what? I'm going to be using my, my disjointed option, and I'm going to be punishing you for it. And right now, we have Super Striker off stage at 49% on their second stock. Mr. E still holding on for dear life on their first one at near max rage. They're going to air dodge through a back air, and they're going to start holding center yet again. I love Mr. E recognizing that Super Striker was going for a cross up on that back air there, and they were going to get it despite the ledge as the forward air takes the stock. Despite the ledge, uh, despite Super Striker being so insanely close to the ledge right there. It's one of those crazy, like, tiny micro spacing situations that really separates, you know, the wheat from the chaff as far as, like, top and uh, high and mid level players go. And as uh, I say that, Super Striker explodes. Yeah, I. I I don't think he was able to, to make it back there uh, because of a really good high recovery catch from Mr. E. Uh, he didn't have a jump either, so he was committed to side B either way, and I don't even think the uh, up B would have made it back. But this is a situation where we could see Sonic take it, but no, he's actually taking the whole ledge a little bit. Um, he's going to try to commit the holding center, but no, he gets put back in the corner again by the backer too. Mr. E, despite being on a bigger stage, is holding center really nicely, and he's not overextending one bit, which is what Sonic wants you to do. Yeah, very true, very true. They definitely, there's, there's any character in this game that wants you to overcommit, it is definitely Sonic the Hedgehog for sure, which is, you know, funny considering him. But, uh, yeah, holding down center stage right now, Mr. E is gonna find his way back to the ground, almost running right into that forward smash right there on the part of Super Striker, but able to jump narrowly above it as well as narrowly avoid that spring right there in the hitbox, trying to go for a gimp on that regard. Super Striker needs to close out this stock right now if they want any chance at remaining in this winner's bracket here at Wanted, and it looks like they might still be able to do that. Yeah, well, hey, the, the, it is not over just yet, my friend. Oh, and they were looking for something on the side, but it's going to be a spike there for Mr. E to keep him up in the air. Still yeah. catch the landing. That was a completely perfect situation there for Mr. E. Right at the very end, we're going to see it in a second, too. He waits for the air dodge as uh, Super Striker's coming down without any jumps. He recognizes, okay, he can air dodge through this up air. If my up air hits, he's taking damage and possibly dying anyway. But if he lands in front of me after the air dodge, which we know he's going to do, he's going to get up tilted and he is going to be uh, dead for it. Yeah, especially that patience on the platform by the first stock. I think his only, only real yeah, option right is to just like perfectly time, like, oh. Yeah, frame traps, baby. Mr. E got those. He's very good at it. Yeah, definitely. Um, 
Definitely, uh, stay another day at the office for Mr. E, for sure. That's something that he definitely specializes in as far as that goes, man. If you're gonna have to specialize in that if you main Lucina, you know, a character who really rewards strong fundamentals. And knowing those 50-50 scenarios and, like, analyzing those scenarios and knowing when one exists and when one doesn't and whatnot, that's crucial because that is really just the mark of when you're really...